Hey, Jay Ashcroft joins us by phone. He is in a secure bunker somewhere in Jefferson City. Good morning, <laughs> Mr. Secretary of State. Good morning. Thank you for having me, McGraw. You got it. You made some news here the last uh, couple of days. You want to change the way we put a n initiative ballot on the ballot. What's going on here? Well, what's really going on is we want to get rid of some of the, the frivolous initiative petitions, the initiative petitions where people never have any real intent of getting them on the ballot or getting signatures for them, but it's just costing the taxpayers of the state money. Um, the previous record we had for the number of initiative petitions filed through our office was about 220. This year we're already at 450 initiative petitions. Uh, we have one individual that's filed 70 of those initiative petitions. Uh, you know, obviously, I, I'm, I'm kind of a, uh, a referee in that process. I have to make sure that we follow the rules. I don't really take sides on those initiative petitions because while it's going on, because it wouldn't be fair. So when I say frivolous, I just mean these are initiative petitions that have no chance to get to the ballot, but it costs the people of the state money to subsidize the petition through the process of approving them. And I just don't think that's appropriate. When we have someone that, that files an initiative petition, uh, a week before the deadline to turn in the signatures, well, they're never going to get that petition back to even start collecting the signatures. It doesn't make sense for the people of the state to have to subsidize that. So so what do you want to do? Um, we'd like to put a, a small fee on the filing of an initiative petition. Uh, it would be $500, and if you actually go ahead and get the signatures, then we refund that to you. If you don't, if you just filed it just to file it and say, look at what I filed, that money would be put into the publication fund because the state of Missouri is required to publish each statewide issue that gets to the ballot. This year in our budget, we had to ask for $6 million to do that. And I don't think that the people of the state should have to necessarily subsidize uh, initiative petitions before they've even voted on them. If the people of the state vote and say, yes, we want that, well, it's one thing for the taxpayer dollars to be put toward it but not if they haven't even had the chance to vote on it. Well, they have to know what they're voting on before they have a chance to vote on it. I agree. I agree, and, and, and that's part of our law. But I'd like to see the people that are bringing this, these initiative petitions just help with that cost instead of putting, I mean, $6 million. I guess when you're talking a $28 billion budget, it doesn't seem like that much, but it still seems like a lot to me. And there are a lot of other places we could use that money. Uh, Missouri Secretary of State uh, Jay Ashcroft, um, do you want to limit – or re restrict a company or somebody from hiring people to go out and gather signatures? Right now we have our local election authorities that have to verify the signatures free of charge uh, when these initiative petition drives are finished and they turn in the signatures to us. Uh, if you're St. Louis County in 2016, that costs them $75,000, dollars that's an unfunded mandate. If you're Greene County, it was less. It was only, I don't know, fifty to $75,000. And if you're Stone County down in southwest Missouri, it was only $1,500. But that's money those counties don't really have that they haven't allocated for that. And I think if you're some large special interest that's spending 2 $3 to pay per signature to pay people to get those signatures, we ought to, we ought to charge you some uh, small fee, less than a dollar per signature. I don't know exactly what it would be. Uh, to help offset the cost of what the local election authorities do. When that wouldn't be money the Secretary of State's office would keep. We would just pass that down to the local election authorities that have to hire part-time workers, that have to pay overtime to check those signatures. The bigger, the bigger question here is, um, I get, I mean, you, you bring up all uh, legitimate points, but the it's really not a citizen petition process because a citizen really doesn't have the resources to get everything needed to get on the ballot. It really is a big business, special interest initiative process. It pretty much is. You know, when I talked about that cost per signature, we did try to bifurcate that. So we said if, if it is John Smith and Jane Doe and a group of friends that are collecting signatures, what I would call a true citizen initiative, they wouldn't have to pay. The idea being if you're a grassroots organization or a grassroots set of people and you don't pay to collect the signatures, then we the people understand that we won't charge you. But if you're some special interest that's going to be spending four or five million dollars, you're spending a million and a half dollars to get the signatures and then more to publicize it, 
well, you know, if you're trying to buy your own laws over the will of the people, then you ought to help offset that cost. We'll wait and see what happens. While we have you, it was a story came out this week that um, the federal government, federal officials, said that Russia targeted 21 states' voter registration rolls, and they said that a small number of states were successfully penetrated. Do you have any evidence of that happening here in Missouri? No, there is none. Um, DHS, the, the, the U.S. government has told us that they have no evidence of any sort of penetration or breach or hack of Missouri election systems. I have to tell you, uh, we regularly talk to the Department of Homeland Security and other federal officials, and I'm pretty saddened by some of the things they've said that just aren't correct. Um, you know, and I'm afraid that they are, are, are frightening the good people of the state of Missouri and other states without reason. Uh, we take cybersecurity very seriously. Um, we've enhanced what we're doing this year, and we will continue to do that. Um, but what people don't seem to understand is when they talk about all these scans, all that means is people are looking at our system. And that happens, I don't know, maybe 100,000 times a day. Some are malicious, some aren't. There has been no way in which they've gotten into our system where they've changed anything. Uh, and, if, and if you listen to the information that DHS gives and talks about, oh, there was this, there was this, local election officials were watching their own systems and were reporting that back to DHS because they were working in concert with them. They weren't breached. They weren't hacked. But they were just doing such a good job of watching their own system that they're saying, hey, this looks weird. Let's report that and make sure that they don't get into our system. So, so you're, so you're I would really just let the people know that they should have some confidence in the system. So, just so I understand, you don't believe the Department of Homeland Security when they say a small number were successfully penetrated? Um, I believe that it is in the best interest of the bureaucracy of the Homeland Security uh, to try to make the problem or to make it seem like a large problem. So they will receive more funding. Do you believe, according to the Homeland Security, do you believe them when they say that Russia targeted 21 states' voter registration rolls? You know, I, I have not. They haven't given me uh, any sort of what I would consider any sort of concrete evidence that they did that. Now, they haven't said that they did anything to our systems or even tried to. Um, but we, we probably have 100,000, if not more, scans a day. That's just part of what we do. We are regularly saying this is what's happening. And I'm afraid that sometimes in the, uh, in the quest to get people to click on online links and uh, sometimes headlines are a little bit more sensational than they ought to be and people aren't always careful with their vocabulary. Secretary of State Jay Ashcroft, we'll have to leave it there. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much for having me on. All right. Uh, quick check, 30 seconds. Tim,